are the first public university in Texas to enter into the SB 1882 arena. What we've been doing is working with the seven districts in South Bear County to examine how we might work together to jointly operate a school and make it a university school where we work toward the success for the students in those schools. What we're doing is going out into the local community and working to change the economic and educational outcomes for the families and the children in those schools. The idea here is working with not one school, but working with multiple schools in these communities from birth through age 22. It's about letting the students know college is a potential, but the idea is creating hope first and then driving that toward achievement. We're already making a lot of headway by just creating that presence in the community and these partnerships are gonna do it tenfold. Our motto here is we teach Texas. The system as a whole produces more teachers than any other system in the state. And we embody that here at A&M San Antonio. So part of our partnerships are about how we take our clinical teachers and place them in our partner schools, provide them paid internships, which in turn gives them a connection to that school and hopefully gives them employment in that school after they graduate. Then we can support those teachers so they remain in the classroom over the long haul. I'm a primatologist and a behaviorist, and I study marmosets, which are small New World primates. My research is mostly focused on aging questions. We want to increase that quality of life at end of life so that people are less likely to have Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, frailty. Marmosets are unique, they're small primates, they're easy to work with, they don't carry diseases that harm humans, and they age really quickly. Their lifespan is kind of like a dog's, where it's seven times as fast as ours. And working with primate model allows us to ask questions in a, in a quicker manner than what you can ask in humans. There's a lot of variability in aging. We all know people that are in their 50s and 60s and they're um, able to exercise and do marathons. And then you have individuals like my mom who has had a series of cascading failures. So if we can discover the variables that, that make individuals more uh, vulnerable to poor outcomes, uh, higher risk of morbidity and disease with aging, and then come up with uh, interventions, and if a and San Antonio investigators can solve some of those questions, um, it could have a huge impact on health for humans. I'm a university lecturer and researcher here in the school, and the research that we focus on does work towards trying to elevate the quality of life for persons with disabilities, specifically people wearing prostheses. Uh, this prosthetic foot is quite expensive, uh, and it's out of the price point for people living in resource-limited environments, but this one is not. So this foot right here is manufactured, designed, and is being tested and evaluated in our lab here in Thailand. And our initial pilot data is evidencing that there is really no distinction between these two in, in measures of function and, and comfort and quality of life for the person wearing these types of prosthetic feet. So another research that we're working on right now is expanding the ability of amputees to exercise and to have a broader range of activities as opposed to the activities of daily living. These products, they're designed to enhance mobility and function and they reflect some of the studies that I did at Texas A&M San Antonio and the kinesiology department. I was able to go to class and be instructed by incredible professors who motivated me and inspired me and gave me the needed theoretical and practical foundations that I use and that I'm teaching to my students. 
I'm very humbled and grateful and blessed to have had the opportunity to go to Texas A&M University San Antonio because it has been an instrumental force in the work that my colleagues and I do here today in Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you. Howdy. The stories of our university's achievements are best shared with a simple concept, impact. The people you saw in the snippets of this video are a small sampling of what we have accomplished and what we will continue to achieve. Texas A&M University, San Antonio, a young university on a mission, and in just 10 years, making an impact. I start by thanking many Aggies who ensured A&M San Antonio would come to fruition, and they continue to support our campus in many ways. Special Century Council members, people like the late Bartel Zachary, Dr. Carl Rama, Mr. Jim Adams, Mr. Lowry Mays, the Honorable Henry Cisneros, Dan Allen Hughes, Carrie Baker Coleman, Wheezy Steen, Lionel Sosa, J.D. Salinas, to name just a few. Thank you for supporting the Chancellor Century Council and A&M San Antonio. Our students, faculty, staff, and alumni are leading and enriching their communities and professions through their expertise and service. The scope of what we are accomplishing here at A&M San Antonio far reaches beyond the here and now. Although we're young, we're emerging with an impact in the homes of our students, future educators, the public health sector, business, science, technology, all around the world. We flourished during the good old normal times, and now we're evolved and adapted to the campus lifestyle necessitated by COVID-19. The pandemic has challenged everyone to imagine, create, and do differently. As the saying goes, in crisis comes new opportunities. I can say with certainty, we have accomplished more than we ever imagined possible. And as you should come to expect within a community of learners, we have learned. This past spring, in large part due to the resourcefulness of our faculty and staff, we have converted 1,100 courses to remote modalities, provided 184 loaner laptops, and 259 MIFIs to students to offer a digital bridge in their learning. Because of the foresight of the May Center for Experiential Learning and Community Engagement, we were able to keep 300 student workers employed through remote working. And the May Center hosted 17 virtual career and employment fairs to continue opportunities for both students, alumni, and businesses. Over the summer, our enrollment spiked by over 20%, and even with the significant surge in COVID-19 cases in midsummer, we anticipate modest growth in fall enrollment and students will be living in the residence hall. A majority of our courses, over 70%, are offered remotely, either hybrid or fully online. Our primary goal was to ensure that students have choices that support their comfort level and life situation. And like many universities across the nation, we are finding ways to address the unexpected challenges our students and their families are facing due to the pandemic, such as food and housing insecurities, job loss, and family illness. Donors like you have supported the Jaguar Lift, a campaign for emergency student relief. Thank you. This summer, A&M San Antonio experienced another first, acceptance into the NAIA and membership into the Red River Athletic Conference. The Startup Athletics Program is quickly evolving with several coaches on board for golf, soccer, and softball. Already up and running is the new eSports program. In fact, I even competed, if you can imagine that, in competitive sports. Yes, I was one of the rookie eGamers. Don't worry, my gamer career is DOA. Our student growth also means new spaces. On August 18th, we officially opened the new doors to the newest classroom hall. With only 10 years under our belt, we're developing a distinguished reputation for research, innovation, and an exceptional faculty. At Texas A&M San Antonio, we are on a mission, focused on meeting the challenges of the future of Texas and the nation. Thanks for your continued support of the Chancellor Century Council. Pause up.